Welcome to the Landscaping Podcast. My name is Joel Barnett and I'm your host. And in today's episode, I'm talking with Josh Hooper from Landscape Techniques. Josh is a landscape from South Australia and his company does design and build on of the high-end projects in South Australia. And it's great to talk to someone who's so obviously passionate about what they do. And you can tell that Josh loves his job. And that's usually a fair indication of, of the success of a business about why they're successful if people enjoy working there. So in this chat, we talk about the challenges of increasing your number of staff you've got. Uh, so you can't just add people, add a bunch of people and it's all going to work out well. So we'll talk about the um, challenges behind that, as well as some advantages of using the right tool for the right project and how that can benefit not only your uh, staff morale, but your profitability and efficiency. And we also touch on keeping your body and mind healthy as well. So there's plenty to touch on in this chat with Josh Hooper and hopefully you enjoy it. And Josh, thank you very much for joining us on the Landscaping Podcast. My first question for you is how did you start in the industry? How I started in the industry, um, I did a environmental traineeship after having a little bit of time off after school. Did that for almost a year. So my best mate and I, it's called Green Core over here. We built uh, paths through um, Waterfall Gully. So it's just like a national park. And, you know, we're using dingoes and excavators and all that on the hill and absolutely loved it. And then from there, I uh, went to TAFE and did um, horticulture, I think it was back then. Did all that. And then, yeah, best mate and I started what is now Landscape Techniques and just did some subby work for some bigger landscaping companies. And then slowly got some, yeah, probably got two or three. Um, so employed two or three guys um, we split split in the business and just worked as two teams uh, and then just slowly just got bigger and bigger gareth ended up leaving the business was almost 10 years now so he lives uh, probably about an hour and a half away from the city so he just couldn't be he couldn't continue to do the travel for you, mate, that's probably not not a long way, but um, no, that's a nightmare. That's going into Melbourne, so I hate going yeah, into Melbourne. You so. don't do that, no. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So then it just became me, and yeah, I just I suppose that let me just do what I wanted to do with the business, and we got up to almost twenty employees. We sort of cut back to now sixteen, and yeah, really, well, we, we're sort of progressing quite well and how my goals are for the business and um, we've got a little design team and an estimator and all that so yeah going well so was that 10 years after you started that he left or 10 years ago no nah, so that we now 21 years all right about the same. Yeah. yeah yeah 10 years with, um, with gareth and then 10 10 almost 11 years going strong and so i knew just basically did the course at TAFE and then so we can we can do this. Yeah, <laughs> pretty pretty much. And we just enjoyed it. Like um, yeah. the biggest thing for me is you know not you know actually enjoying getting up in the morning and going to work. If there's some sort of enjoyment, then you know you're kicking goals. I reckon. Yeah, I feel sorry for people that don't feel that. No, correct. Yeah, and it's you know yes, okay. Some days you don't. This morning I wasn't really keen to get out of bed, but I did. But it's the days where you know you see a client or you're finishing a job, that satisfaction is the thing that just keeps me going. And it keeps the boys going as well, you know. All the lads that we've got, you know, we do a big handover at the end of a, of a project and just seeing the faces of them with the clients, you know, having a beer and chatting about it, yeah, is, is the reason why we do it. Yeah, it's such a massive bonus that you can have staff that care about it as well. They're not just rocking up to, to, to get their paycheck and do a job and then go home. They actually care about the work that they're doing. Yeah, definitely. I think that's, it, it's the satisfaction at the end of the day. It's, you know, you've got to be able to build or want to build with your hands and be passionate about it. So yeah, most of, like you, you know, most of my guys have been with me for, you know, seven to 10 years. So they've, they've seen it all. They haven't done it all, but they've definitely seen it all. Yeah, they, they like to be challenged because doing the old sand lay paving or something like that doesn't get them, doesn't challenge them and I suppose it doesn't get the satisfaction going like it used to. Mm. So when you were um, operating with Gareth, how did that 
work like compared to running by yourself did everything go well like have you got were you doing the same skills but had just two different crews so it worked well like that pretty much yeah no it worked really well gareth uh yeah was my well, he's my one of my best mates he married my sister as well during that time so he's now brother-in-law so that split um was really important that we got that right um we ended up um, employing a guy to actually work the split out as well when we left so both money both how we would do it so that you know he's a family member so you know we're always gonna make sure it worked properly mm. yeah. and have you found that things a lot different when it's just yourself running the business um definitely now i suppose at first it was very daunting you know going from having someone to always talk to and spitball off all that sort of thing to not having that and just making the decision your own it definitely i was pretty good at just making a call but um after gareth left it really made me aware that you know what i was doing was it like <laughs> um if it failed it failed because of me and yeah. no one else yeah are we doing any designs in those early days as well? A little bit. They were pretty terrible. They were uh, <laughs> a couple of squares and circles and bits and pieces. And I never, look, I never did a design course or anything like that. I was just self-taught. And then, yeah, just got guys that were way better than me. And, yeah, away we ran. So did, was that in the early days that you employed a designer? It was. Yeah, it was. It was probably... So when Gareth left, we employed Tom, who now has Eastern Designs. So he worked with us for all, just over five years, I reckon. Tom's a good mate of mine as well. And yeah, it was, I could definitely tell that once that happened and we, you know, got really into all the designs, then I, I like the idea of the design and construct. I love the idea and I, I love it when we, build that relationship with a client from very early on and you just go through the whole process. And at the moment, you know, that process is taking six to 12 months. You know, the jobs that we are doing now have a reasonable amount of structural build in them. So councils and engineering and energy assessments and documentation just does take a long time, but I enjoy that. So you do most of that, do you? That, all that yeah. documentation, yep. Yeah, so, um, yeah, uh, I've got uh, two two lads that do all the design work now. So Luke and Brad, they, uh, they they start from the initial consult all the way through to council approvals. And we, myself and Nigel, who is my estimator, project manager, we sort of work through the, the documentation as well so that, you know, everything's got to work. You would obviously know that you know it looks sometimes it looks great on paper or on a 3d and you go how the heck am i going to do that <laughs> and we do too you know the boys push the boundaries a lot and we've got to work out how we're going to build it and not try and blow the budget too much yep so how did it start when you put i think it was tom on first how did that go about you know did you both go to the consultations and then he did the design or yeah pretty much yeah so we both went to the consultation um you know, I would probably, we'd work together and do the initial sketch. You know, we probably weren't making a huge amount of money at that point um, in regards to design, but I knew that was the way forward that we wanted to go. So, you know, the construction side sort of had to hold that, you know, back that up a little bit. And then, yeah, Tom, Tom worked for us originally doing construction. And then, you know, we just talked about, all right, let's, you know, do three days a week and doing design and then it just became full time and we started probably right at the start of when you know the external works in Australia was really starting to take off I suppose you know like natural stone was really starting to become popular and just people doing something a little bit out there with their you know what we do now if you had have said that we were doing that 10 years ago there's no way I would have said yeah that's going to happen you know yeah. Yeah, it's really gone leaps and bounds, really. And the guys you got down, do they go out to do the consultations? Yeah, so Brad and Luke both, yeah, so they'll they'll go out there, do the consultations. I pretty much don't get involved in a huge amount anymore. Some of the uh, guys that we have repeat business with um, that have sort of built up that relationship with myself, I go out there because I, you know, love to have a chat with them and, you know, it's just 
that ongoing relationship, keeping that moving. But the other boys, are, yeah, they're just taking it in their stride. They're, they're really wanting to take more responsibility and get that design side of our business really pumping. Do you do any designs that you don't build? Uh, we do, and they're becoming more and more. We, we've got to the point where now there's no way we can build every design. So we've got a few guys that have pretty much worked for LT in the past that are now, you know, we're, we're sort of giving them the designs because we really want to see them all be built because they're, you know, some pretty cool stuff going on. And, yeah, we've, we've got to the point where we can't just be that design and construct yeah. business. We've actually now got to, you know, engage others to do it. We, you know, we get to sort of pick and choose a little bit. Our bread and butter is that we do have either a renovation involved or some sort of building aspect, whether it's class one or class 10 in the design. There's not a huge amount of landscapers in Adelaide that have that that capacity to do that. So that's where, you know, that's our niche sort of market really. And then those other ones, yeah, that we do, the other guys can um, can go for it. We just recommend pretty much two guys and, yeah, we want to see it built and built well. Yeah. And yeah. so have you got your building licence to build? Like, yeah, so I got class yeah. one, class 10. Yeah, so <laughs> it all started just before Gareth left. He ended up breaking his leg so we decided all right let's why don't you go and do your builder's license so he did that and then two years later um i said you know if you're going to go i've got to go go do it as well so i went and did it and yeah it's it's been a long time like you know you know the carpentry side we've got our we've got two carpenters one um fully qualified one a third fourth year apprentice as well so yeah, it's just I literally just go out there and tick it all off and make sure it's all done properly, which it normally is. So have you got enough work for like to have two carpentry guys on just doing carpentry? We do. We we struggle a little bit, but we do a lot of our own form work as well. So we do quite a bit of architectural concrete, furniture, all that sort of stuff. So we used to subcontract that portion out and that's sort of like our backup if the boys don't have enough in the builds that they can come and do that. Plenty of decks to do. Um, they're really, those guys are really starting to get involved with the steel fabrication as well. So really starting to learn about, you know, all the welding techniques and all that. So that's another little um, a little thing that they can go and keep themselves busy. Now, do you do any uh, outside, off-site training for the staff or is they all just coming with those skills? No, we do do a fair bit of offsite. So we we have a, a budget in place each year for offsite training. You know, we try and get companies to actually come to us and do little training sessions at our depot. Master landscapers from South Australia do a fair bit as well. They've been really good. So little bits like that. You know, Nigel, our estimator, he just did a uh, like a course on project management. I'm doing one on contractual law at the moment which is pretty exciting um, <laughs> um just let, just making sure contracts are all very tight uh, the rise and fall clause is a big one for us you know we want to have the in price of materials going up yeah like i'd love to have it in there not not a lot of clients like to sign up with that in there which i can totally understand so you know it's just knowing where our, where we stand, I suppose, and where they do as well. We've sort of got to the point where we won't sign a contract until 30 days prior to starting on site mm. because then we can actually guarantee, you know, most of the time we can guarantee the product costs. So that's, yeah, you know, in the last two years we've been stung quite hard by that. But, you know, you just got to live and got to learn. That's it. Yeah, but I've, uh, I've said to people, I don't ask for more money off the clients because I don't give it back to them if the price goes the other way. Yeah. So, it's, yeah. yeah, swings and roundabouts. It is. Yes, correct. Yep. Yeah. Uh, who do you, whose contracts do you use? So, the master landscapers did one. So, we use that for our smaller projects. And then we use the Mar um, MBA ones as well. So, master builders, uh, minor works contract is what we use. 
you can sort of, you know, it doesn't allow you to manipulate it a lot, but you can add certain pages in that we like to do. More detail, the better for us in regards to, you know, prime costs and all that and PC sums, making sure that everything's noted there, allowances for us. Yeah, it's good for you and good for the client as well because everyone wants to know exactly what they're getting. Yeah, transparency is everything for us, like 100%. So how many staff do you have at the moment? You mentioned quite a few different... Yeah, so 16. So we've got 16. So we've got three teams construction-wise. I've actually jumped back on the tools uh, myself. We pretty much employed everyone else to take over my roles in the office. And I, I love it. Like I, I sort of got to a point maybe a year or so ago where I was, I was sort of just picking up the slack and doing, you know, the crappy jobs, really. Still, you know, being heavily involved in the business, but it wasn't a full-time role. And then we ended up uh, losing a, uh, a senior supervisor last year. Um, he started his own business. And so I just went, well, it's time for me to get back out there. And, yeah, having, I've loved it, absolutely loved it. It's given me pretty much a new lease on life. I'm very lucky that I've got guys at the front end that are running the business really well as well. Have you got a favourite part that you do, like a favourite? Uh, I love setting out. So um, that initial set out, because, again, it's like you forget a conduit or, you, you know, you forget to contact a contractor or, you know, you set a level wrong. Like we're doing some pretty intense pulls at the moment that are, you know, not up in the air, but uh, the heights are everything. So, you know, working through that. I've got a great lad that works with me, Brett, who's been in our company for over seven years. So him and I and an apprentice just, yeah, we gel really well. So I suppose having that team, you know, that really good team that gels together helps a lot as well. And also, I suppose I just love every aspect. Not, I don't love getting on the shovel and digging in muddy clay, but, you know, it's not always forever. Have you got any machines that you own? Yeah, we do. We've got a couple of excavators and a uh, bobcat and we've got a couple of trucks as well. But uh, yeah, trying not to use them too much at the moment with the price of diesel. <laughs> yep. and so are you doing pools yourself as well? We, we contract pools. We'd love to do them. So there's just too much involved. You know, like there's, there's certain elements that we contract out that we probably couldn't make that much money on it if we were to do it ourselves. We most, most of the time, or probably 50-50, we do the digs um, because we're set up for that. So we do the pool dig and then we sub it out. And we just, yeah, our pool builder, we've had a pretty good relationship for almost five or six years now. And so, you know, we give him quite a bit of work and he helps us out at the same time. So does that building license that you've got, does that allow you to do pools if you wanted to? It does, yeah, it does, yes. yeah. Yeah. And, you know, maybe when it gets really quiet, we might just do that. It's probably one of my goals is to, yeah, do a job from start to finish, no contractors whatsoever, which is sort of what 20 years ago, that's what you did. But there was no pools involved. There was, there was very little structural elements. But, mm. uh, yeah, plumbing, electrical, large tiling jobs we contract out. Um, and then it's pretty much the pools, really. Now, do you ever do build any projects that someone else has designed? Uh, we do. We've, we've done a few. Um, we've done a few with uh, Acre, actually. They, yep. they referred us to a couple back in the day. We get a few coming across our desk, but at the moment, we just don't have the capacity to do them. Yeah. yeah. Are you looking to expand your team? Look, we'd love to have another construction team, for sure. But at the moment, you know, with everyone so busy, it's, it's quite hard to find someone good because if you, we've got another team, we pretty much almost need a team of three, really. But at the moment, we're, we're keeping up with what we've got, sort of. Yeah, we've got, a, we've got guys that have been, you know, the guys that actually make the decisions. They've been in the business for quite a while. Trust them with everything, really. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that makes a massive difference being able to have those guys who you can trust. Her. So you can't just snap your fingers and have three new guys to start off a new job. No, and you, no. Yeah, And that's why, you know, we've got three apprentices, um, landscape apprentices, and that's where we're trying to build them to get that next team. 
But it's, yeah, you know, with the amount of elements that are in projects now, I think, you know, an apprentice comes out, they still need a good five years before they can actually be running a, a large landscaping or external build project, really. Yeah, it's just insane. Like, I'm still learning now yep. all sorts of new skills as well. So, oh, like, yeah. yeah, every job, the, the details that are in them are so much more now than what they used to be. Just yep. crazy. And then, yeah. and let alone doing, like, houses as well. <laughs> well, yeah, not, yeah. Oh, look, uh, we could do homes, but there's just, there's not, I, I, yeah, it's not something we want to be doing. It's more, you know, if it's involved with, extending uh, the kitchen with some bifolds and stuff like that out into the pool area. We've been doing quite a few sort of outdoor stu- like studios as well linked to the pool. So a lot of people even, you know, started probably from COVID having that space outside where, you know, you've got potential for a bedroom, toilet, you know, little breakfast bar type thing with a pretty much just a cooktop, some fridges. And yeah, that's our, that's what we like to do. Um, and your guys are designing that, are they? They are, yeah, yeah. So they're designing that as well. I think that's, you know, that's the difference as well for us is that we do now have the ability that, you know, we've probably done 10 of those, I suppose, design-wise. And each time it gets better and better, the boys do a fair bit of their own teaching through YouTube and just talking with architects and all that sort of thing, talking with draftsmen as well about the easier ways of drafting something. And also just conversations in the office with all of us, really. Yeah, well, there's a lot of knowledge going around there. So yeah. Yeah, sharing that is certainly a great yeah. idea. Yeah. Have you got any systems and procedures or anything you, you use? Like you must to have that many staff on, I assume. We do. We do have. And it's forever evolving. Like we were, so like scheduling for us, we used to have a massive whiteboard that had four weeks on it. And, you know, you'd schedule that way. Um, but that whiteboard was at our construction depot um, and not everyone goes there. So then we, we were just looking for apps. Everyone's got a phone. 90% of our guys have got Apple or 99% have got Apple. So the Android users are the ones that kill me. Uh, but, <laughs> so we've got this app now. It's called Miro. And we just set up pretty much that whiteboard as a, uh, a digital uh, whiteboard and it's got all the boys' names, where they are, who's wanting what truck or what machine or what for a good month. And then it's, you know, got things like links to annual leave forms so that we know when everyone's away, all the guys that are doing TAFE, it's got their days on it. So it's an easy one that you just open your phone, you can just click on there. Most of them know where they're going anyway because we try and keep the teams all together. But some of the apprentices, if it's a big planning day, they'll go and do the planning, the other guys. And uh, yeah, it works, works really well. That's the biggest day-to-day one that we use. Then, yeah, we've got an estimating program. We use Benchmark, um, which is, we probably don't use it as much as what we uh, could, but it definitely, you know, it's sped up our quoting time by, yeah, 200% really. And the fact that it's all logged there is very handy. Yeah. And then, you know, we have a billion processes and procedures <laughs> and, you know, 90% of them probably get done, but you can have too many as well. You know, it's a lot of the time it's just, yeah, the boys read them, sign them, um, hand them in. And it's only when you sort of, see that you know even just uniforms you know the other day i saw someone not wearing a uniform and it's you know you just pull them up and say what's going on oh, i didn't wash it all right well come on you got to wear the uniform that's that's one of our rules uh, and that's where you get caught out like we use a uh, photo stream so the icloud photo stream we have every job that we do we have a stream built in for it so you know, from start to finish, either the supervisor, leading hand, or the apprentice, they can add photos. So where conduit to put, where, you know, marking out for steps, all that sort of stuff is all logged on there and everyone can see it. It's also a good way for other teams to sort of see progress from other um, jobs as well. So keeps everyone a little bit accountable at the same time. Yeah, that's probably it, mate, to be honest. Yeah. Do you do any um, job tracking? Like how do you work out if you're profitable on 
jobs? We do. So we another app is we use TimeSite, which is our – so it's the app that we use for all of our pay. So the boys will put in, you know, hours on site and then normally what they do, we have I think it's seven allocations of one to seven in regards to – what they've been doing on site. So whether it's, you know, they may have been doing some base prep, which is, I think it's number two, they put that down to might have been four hours and then the rest is soft skate, which is number four. They put that down and that's the rest of their four hours. So that's how we sort of keep track of it. And that gets then put into, uh, so we use smart sheets a little bit as well. So that thing gets put into benchmark and then it just spits out where we're at. But it's, yeah. You would know with landscaping, it is very hard to track exactly where you are. There are yeah. so many elements; it's crazy. Yeah, it's a lot of yeah. The smaller you are, the easier it is. Like I, I just keep it a spreadsheet, which yeah. like which is a printed out one. I just write in it with a pen, so that's yeah. how, how high tech mine is. <laughs> but I wish that's what we, I wish we could do that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's it, yeah. That's the biggest one for me is has been tracking. So probably the last three years would really tried to work out what where we're making money and where we're potentially not making as much money at the end of the day the idea is that you make some profit obviously but just trying to work out where our profitable um tasks are is probably the biggest one for me so that we know all right we didn't actually allow enough time for this why was that as you say details are crazy at the moment um, and they will continue to get even more crazy but um, I think it's just the finishing touches to be honest like at the end of the day yeah buffing concrete ed- doing all the edges sealing even patchwork the amount of concrete that someone will chip and doing the patching on that always takes time yeah so do you have does your designers like target a certain profitable job <laughs> like and then include that a lot in your I wish that was the case, but no, they don't. They just choose the hard ones <laughs> no. that you don't make money on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it would be great, but no, it's it's all driven by the client brief and potential architecture as well. So, you know, every design, and I suppose that's, that can be our downfall, is that everything is very custom, very bespoke, very challenging. But, yeah, it's, every job is very different like we do have our sort of style but every job is extremely different different and unique to that project yeah that's what keeps the guys interested though as well doing interesting things they don't want to do the same yeah same job on different sites every time big time both construction and design yeah 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 Yeah, for sure so do you do anything outside of the workplace for your staff other than the training? But do you do anything like um, like just catch ups and <clears throat> we do, yeah. So we do um, we normally have two or three uh, little we do like Christmas in July. We we just did a uh, a dinner um, down at Beach Burrito down the bay here with all the the partners as well, as well as the staff. So <clears throat> we hadn't done that for a while with COVID being around. So it was good. We have, you know, a couple of new guys, so it was good to sort of meet their partners and it's always good, you know, catching up with the partners of the staff that have been here for a while. And then, yeah, we we often do toolbox meetings. Got actually one tomorrow where we just have a, a Barbie breakfast in the morning, just run through, you know, some housekeeping stuff. We just have a chat if anyone's got any concerns, you know, tools that haven't, uh, that might need to be fixed tools that we might need to purchase you know the guy i love a little bit of input from the guys so as much as i run it i you know i'm always asking questions and trying to get them to answer yeah because it's they're they're the sometimes the best people to answer that as well because they they can be using things a lot more and know what you need big time yeah yeah with us doing a fair bit of structural steel or just you know big steel sort of stuff we um bought this circular saw, it's a Milwaukee circular saw that you can cut through almost 10 mil plate. Uh, and it's a game changer. It was, it's my favorite tool by far, you know, cutting up a six mil sheet, the, you know, cutting in half would probably take three blades on a grinder plus 20 minutes. And it took me three minutes the other day. I was just amazed. So That's crazy. yeah. 
Yeah, yeah today cool. I was putting up a um a, a railway sleeper retaining wall today and putting coach screws in there. Yeah, and I was I said to one of my girls because I was had it. I was got a, a attachment on the impact driver to drive yeah. the coach screws in. Yeah, um, I said to him, "Yeah, this would have taken me twice as long back in the day because I'd have the socket set sort of <laughs> turning it." Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. There's, it's crazy some of the things you used to use. Yeah, exactly. And they just weren't around or you just didn't think about it. And that's yeah. where having a quite a, a broad range of guys that some are very mechanically minded, some aren't, you know, like it's it's really good to get. Wonder if we could, you know, if there's something like that, and then you Google it and you find there is, and then it yeah, it just makes uh well hopefully it makes you profit. Yeah. Yep, and and the guy, I, I assume the guys would like those sort sort of things as well, like making their job easier. Oh, they love them. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> yep. <laughs> they love new tools. They yeah. don't they don't stay new for long though. That's the only thing. Yeah, that is disappointing. Yeah, but it is what it is. Yeah. So have have you got what are your plans going forward? Like, do you have a five year plan or anything like that that you look to work towards? Yeah, I do. I've got I've got some goals. At the moment, it's just sort of getting through this period. To be honest. <laughs> we we're extremely busy which is a great thing and i love it but it can take a bit of a toll on everyone just the and now you know the the annual leave sheet that we've got has had a fair workout um everyone's pretty keen to have a couple of weeks off whether it's school holidays coming up or the next ones or whatever so now that we can travel a little bit the guys are really doing that but yeah for me I, I suppose I've got a new lease with being on site. Um, so that's, that's got me going a little bit. My whole goal, probably five year plan would be to do a four day week and then do four, four and three would be perfect for me. Being in a business for so long, being the business owner, um, you do, you don't have, well, I don't have a huge, I have a lot of interests, but I don't have a huge amount of time to pursue those interests. So, you know, in five years, I'm sort of really planning on just setting up a few things to, you know, continue obviously being challenged and, you know, hopefully they're financially viable at the same time. So are they doing things like making money outside of the landscaping? Yeah, a little bit like that. Yeah. So whether it's making money or just, I'd love to be doing, you know, little developments and stuff like that as well. My wife and I love that sort of thing. Um, so, you know, whether it's little renos here and all that. Yeah, I think I think that would be something that we'd be we'd be keen to get moving, which you can sort of do in the background. But I'd, uh, yeah, I think the idea of having a four day week, three day, doing something else, whether it's, you know, I love surfing and I just haven't had the time to do it over the last couple of years or not, not as much as I want, just winding down a little before, you know, you get too old and you can't do anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it doesn't make any sense sometimes when you think about life, how it works out. Like you work, you spend all your time working and then you have most of, most of your money when you're retired, when you can't do anything. I know, that's <laughs> right. Don't want that. No. Nah. Nah. So, yeah, and, you know, keeping myself fit and healthy is probably a big one for me. Longevity in this game is, is we've had a few guys come and go with just back issues and stuff like that. Op health and safety and workplace safety is huge for us, but some guys just aren't fit for it, you know, like whether it's, you know, they don't do enough stretching in the morning or genetically they you know, their lower back is no good. But yeah, I think if you can yeah, keep, your, keep your body healthy and your mind clear, I think you can do it for a fair while. Did you do anything other than surfing to get your mind clear? Uh, I, you know, I'd go, I, I'd go to the gym, try and do it at least a couple of times a week. So that sort of clears it out. I've got nothing but that voice in my head telling me to stop. Um, <laughs> so trying to block that out. And just, you know, stuff with the kids. Like I've got um, a 10 and 8-year-old and I love spending time with them. So, you know, that's something that clears my head. Just going for a walk on the beach with my wife and the dog is always pretty nice too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's a simple thing. Yeah. That's, uh, you can get a bit caught up sometimes when you're running a business how everything's hectic, but then yeah. it's nice to, to take those, you know, 20 minutes just to do nothing. Yeah, and just, you know, to turn the phone off or, you know, just put it on silent. You can get back to them in an hour's time. You know, if it's really, really important, they'll ring you five times probably. So um, you'll get... <laughs> 
you'll know that it's important then. But yeah, it's, as you say, mate, it's the simple things. Life can be pretty hectic sometimes. Have you do you have you travelled in the past much for surfing? Yeah, it did. Yeah. Um, so that's next year. We've got a, a pretty big uh, trip planned. We were supposed to go away just as COVID hit. We're supposed to do almost a six week Indonesian trip. And so we're going to do a yeah two to three weeks, something like that, March April next year. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, nice. Hopefully, all my baggage gets there. <laughs> What about you, mate? What do you do to wind down? I'm always keen to hear people's methods of winding down. Yeah, I don't do anything actually. Like it's, I go through phases where, I, yeah, I don't feel like I'm working too much. So yeah, I, in the past I have. I felt like I was going, doing way too much, and that's all I do. Yeah. Um, but that is pretty much all I do at the moment. But it doesn't, it you know, it works for my family at the moment. So uh, I think that's important. If it's if it's not working, you need to change it. But if it yeah, there's periods of time where you got to go crazy. Yeah. And yeah, and that's what we're in at the moment, but it's all working pretty well. Like my kids have been on school holidays, so I've had Mondays and Tuesdays off the last two weeks to have mm-hmm. my wife work. So it's not yeah. like, yeah, I'm going as crazy as what I used to in the past. Yeah. Uh, like I still work pretty much every Saturday um, and doing stuff on Sundays as well, but yeah, that's mainly designs. Uh, but I still, uh, like I've, every Sunday I go to my son's soccer game. So, yeah. yeah. It's yeah, the balance is there's no perfect balance, but it's working all right for us. But and it's everyone's different, aren't they? Yeah, like exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's good. And how, yeah. how old are you, Joe? Uh, in January, I'll be 40. Yeah, oh, but, yeah. Birthday for uh, but I need to do stuff more for my body because it's not, it's a bit uh, rounder than it should be. <laughs> <laughs> it's not to, Most uh, people are, mate. Don't worry. Yeah, I got it. Like I can work work pretty hard, but it's uh, it's a balance of what goes out and what goes in. I, I I put a lot out, but then I put quite a lot back in too. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Enjoy yeah. myself doing that. Yeah, yeah. No, and it's yeah, it's it's just making the time for it if you want to. You know, that's that's the big one for me. You can always make time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's yeah one of the things that, that I think you get with maturity from businesses is you learn to do that to take time when you need to. Yeah, um, I mean, my kids are similar age to yours, so. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a pretty awesome time. So it's, you want to be around them and not waste it. You do, definitely. Yeah. And yeah, you want to be present with them too. You know, like it's very easy to just yeah be on the phone or something like that, watching a, a game of, you know, I've got two girls, so I'm always watching netball. So yeah, just turn that off. It's normally on the weekend. Someone, they can call me during the week, you know, all that sort of thing. Have you put any thought into like how long the business would run or what the, the end game is for the business? Um, I have, I have. I'd probably prefer not to put it on uh, yeah. podcast. But, um, I, I definitely, I think the business has the ability to, you know, uh, whether it gets passed down to people within the business now, or whether my kids, um, one of my daughters, she loves drawing stuff. She loves coming to site. She she loves it all. Whether it's something like that or. I think, you know, we've built up a reasonable brand here that I think it can just continue to, to go as long as you've got the personnel to run it um, and you, you're doing all those details, you know, and ticking all those boxes, then I think, yeah, you can just keep going and going. Yeah, like I, I bought my business off my boss because I was an apprentice. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. When yeah. I started. Uh, yeah. And, yeah, and there's a book I mentioned once before called Built to Sell, which, meant, which talks about making your business so that it's, it's running so that it could be sold, whether you want to sell it or not. Yeah. Like, do, you, do you read any books or anything like that? I do. I read a lot of books, yep. Uh, a lot of educational books, for sure. I've read that one. Yeah, and look, it's th- that's probably my end game, right, is that I'm building the business to be a sellable business. But at the same time, I love to be in the business as well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I definitely had, you know, early on was definitely, you know, that micromanager, you know, I'd love to have my finger in everything, but now with the guys that I've got, I don't need to worry. You know, I like to be involved and I like to ring them and ask them, you know, if they've just done a big concrete pour, how it went, was there any issues, you know, what went well, what didn't, you know, get some feedback off them because I'm generally, you know, excited for them and what we're doing. But now, yeah, I'm just concentrating on what I'm doing and just that overall sort of 
look over the business, make sure it's heading in the right directions, which it is. Yep. Yeah, and it's funny what you said about your daughter before as well, because I'm thinking the same about mine. She's uh, there's a pro- there's a game she plays called Roblox where she yeah. does, does some drawings on that. I look at them thinking, yes, you could almost use that for design. <laughs> Sucks. Like yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, take yeah. out no no longer do you need vector works or yeah. anything like that. You can just use Roblox. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. And yeah, and she's really good at drawing, hand drawing as well. So, so when I interviewed Bethany Williamson, she was saying that she started off drawing and just graduate went from there. And my mom was thinking, oh, that's yeah, Ava's like that. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, it'd be yeah. The the default when you're a landscaper is thinking, oh yeah, my son will go in the business, blah blah blah. But that, yeah, it's um. I think the yeah. ability to have, you know, there's lots of um, women that have got pretty successful businesses now. So in the landscaping or landscape design, construction, both. So, yeah, it's definitely possible. Mm. No better time than now, really. That's it, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, Josh, absolutely love this chat. So thank you so much for taking no the time. No worries, mate. It's been great. Been yeah, really appreciate it. No worries. Awesome job.